Hi, Sophie here. So as I've been dreaming up ways to use geometry notes as a grease pencil artist, something that really excites me is the idea that I could instance textures on top of one another to create a soft painterly look. This could be for laying down a random watercolor wash as a base to start painting on top of. It might be to add random background textures to a piece to help fill it out and add style. But the trouble, is that working with grease pencil textures, they don't always play together nicely. It's not as much of a big deal if you work only in one grease pencil object, which is why I usually do that. But as soon as you have multiple objects, like when you instance geometry notes, then you have to contend with how they layer on top of one another in 3D space and any clipping that might occur. So in my geometry notes project so far, I mostly abandoned my hope of using textures or gradients. I limited myself to artworks painted on a full opacity base, and I found other ways of adding textures. But this idea of instancing textures always remained. So here is a solution that I found, and it's pretty simple. So here are the grease pencil textures I want to instance. Each object just contains a single stroke made up of a texture fill material. And as I move them around my scene, you can already see the sorts of things that are happening as I try to layer them on top of one another or just like as they intersect one another. The solution in this case would be to have them on different planes in 3D space. And now that they're on different planes, there's no more clipping and the textures are laying on top of one another in a more painterly way. And so that's the solution. So here's a way that that can be achieved with geometry nodes. So first up, I have just this grid object. And let's say I want to use this to create a background of random painterly textures. First up, I'll add a distribute points on faces node to turn the plane into points. <laughs> and then plug that into an instance on points node. All of my grease pencil objects are in this collection. So I can drag it into my geometry node scene, plug it in as the instances. I want to separate and reset the children. And then I also select relative and here pick instance. And then what I also find nice is to add a random value node into this rotation, not for all of the axes, but I do find it nice to give them a bit of randomness in the axis like facing us, um, but not a nice look is, is this. There is that clipping issue that I was talking about. So to fix this, I'll just add a little node setup between the distribute points on faces node and the instance on points node. First up is set position. Bong. This offset value allows us to move the points and thus the instances along each axis. And now for a node setup like this, which is instancing to a flat mesh object, I can add a scale node. Um, so it's actually not called scale. It is called vector math node, which I never remember. So the easiest way I find to work with that is that you can actually drag out from these different node points. And then the search function comes up with more results. Like I look up scale and it shows the vector math node for scale. So I have this scale node going into the offset of the set position node, and I can have the distribute points on faces normal value feeding into the scale node like this. And then into the scale value of the scale node, I can plug in a random value node. <laughs> Huzzah! And typically I like to make it as small as it can be without having that clipping showing up. So now I have a collection of grease pencil texture instances that are lay layering on top of one another beautifully. So that's one method. But I also really enjoy a good curve to mesh node setup before the distribute points on faces node that looks like this because this allows me to draw curves which turn into instances and it also gives me more flexibility for moving those instances around, for changing them up. So in this case, the curve objects 
they look like this. They look pretty tuby. So the inst uh, so the normals in this case, which I used previously, the normals, in this case, they're kind of going all around in all directions. So another way is to do this without that scale node at all. So I have the set position node in between the distribute points on faces and instance on points node. And I've plugged in a random value node into the offset. I have set the random value node to be vector this time because this allows me to control individual axes. And so basically I just experimented randomizing the different axes Ooh. until I found the direction that I was looking for which is straight ahead to have them move forward and backwards in 3D space in order to get rid of the clipping, the initial clipping. Now, basically what this node setup does is it spreads out the instances along an axis. In this case, the like one that we're looking down, the Y axis, and it just spreads them out so that they're not on exactly the same plane in 3D space. And so depending on your purposes, like whether you're working in 2D or 3D, for example, this might not be something you'd want. Personally, I do see this working especially well for 2D art. So I typically work using an orthographic camera rather than a perspective camera because this camera allows me to move objects like grease pencil objects forward and backwards along the Y axis or whichever axis I'm facing. And it does so without resizing them or moving them at all. But moving along the Y axis allows me to change the order of the layering of the different grease pencil objects in my scene. So it's pretty useful for me to be able to select what shows up in front or behind other things. In this case, I have a separate object for the line art and I can place it in front or behind some of the different watercolor instances. So I hope that this was helpful or at the very least interesting. Making 2D art like this, especially using a lot of textures, it very much goes back to like my roots when I initially started using grease pencil. So it just, it was really important to me to be able to combine that with geometry nodes. So here was how. Uh, thank you for watching. The texture images that I showed in this video are a mix of watercolor and traditional art textures that I made. So I'll link below the packs on Gumroad where you can get them. And the blend files that I was working in for this video, I will also link those and those will be free if you just wanna check them out, look inside, see what's going on. All right, so thank you for following me along on my Geometry Nodes journey. I will see you in the next one.